Hello everyone to the webinar about winning projects, bidding and delivering in the digital age. My name is Johannes Linder. I'm Docs42 Technical Evangelist. So um, I'm always in, in projects and trying to find ways how people can optimize the processes. And one very, very crucial part that we've seen is what we will show you today. And yeah, look, I'm gladly to be joined by Jacob, Jacob Wardrop from 28 Hands. Hello, everyone. All right. Um, I've just got noticed that we had, were stuck on the first slide. Now you see the slide that we had. Good. Um, thank you, Jacob. Um, what we will talk about today is um, obviously RFPs and quote automation. So we get a little insight on this from Jacob. Um, there will be also some questions that we will ask you throughout this, these RFPs and the, the slides, then the biggest part of today's webinar will be the automation lifetime. So we'll show you a live hands-on scenario where you get to see how you can automatically generate quotes, where you can review and send them, adapt to changes. And when there is any project member or anybody who joins a product project and they want to get to know what's hap what has happened, we have full traceability. That's something Jacob will show you later on. We will do something more about the product background, just from a theoretical point of view. And the last part that we will do is a question and answer session. And yeah, before we actually start with telling you something, we ask you something. So we do have our first question today. And yeah, that's the perfect point, Jacob, where I can hand you the word. Uh, thank you, Johannes. So, um, yeah, just before we set the scene about how uh, we see companies who we talk to trying to uh, win and deliver uh, project work to their businesses, um, we wanted to start off with a poll, which if you can answer, um, just through the uh, polling uh, option in um, GoToWebinar, um, we wanted to ask you how many days during the week do you spend on RFP related work and there's um, a number of different options there whether it's um, half a day, less than half a day or, or more than this. So if you can answer this um, we'll obviously be able to see the responses um, as they come in. So you should be able to see it just below the attendees section now. I can see we've already had some responses. Um, okay. Good, so um, if I just go on to the next slide. All right. Interesting results. <laughs> okay, so uh, if I just go on to the next slide, that'll be fine. Um, great, so. We're still collecting responses, so if anybody wants to join the, the poll still, um, feel free to go, because we will eventually close it and then show you the results. All right, then let's share the results. Very interesting. So we have 50% half a day, 50% one to four hours. So I think we're quite in the average what we also expected from everybody who was joining the webinar. Um, yeah, Jacob. Okay, yeah, uh, f thank you, Janice. And uh, yeah, thank you to everyone who's um, voted on that. Um, hopefully, uh, you'll see some technology today which can help reduce the amount of administrative time uh, you spend uh, trying to win win projects. So um, what we're doing here is just setting the scene of how we see um, the work winning, proce uh, work winning processes um, within professional services businesses. So we've picked um, an example of responding to a request for a proposal because lots of our clients uh, come across this every day and they're finding they have more and more um, of these coming in and they have to sift through more, more information than, than, they, um, than they have had to in the past. Um, this, what we're talking about today doesn't just apply to responding to requests for proposals. Lots of our clients are responding to pre-qualification questionnaires if they work in the public sector, uh, tenders, bid submissions. Effectively, this webinar is relevant for anyone who's trying to win project work and has to present information in a certain way to a client. Um, 
So the example which um, which we're using is responding to a, a request for a proposal. Um, so if I just go on to the next slide, that will um, that will. Uh, Move, move this on nicely. Um, the companies who we speak to have to present um, information to support to support a bid, which is, tends to be locked in lots of different systems, whether it's financial data, uh, certificates, uh, qualifications of staff, um, CVs, a track record in a certain sector, information from past projects. And broadly speaking, we see there's kind of two types of work, so, uh, two types of work associated with winning um, projects. Uh, one being admin work, and one being uh, actual client facing activities so what we're talking about today is trying to reduce the amount of administrative time associated with uh, responding to bids and that's mainly because uh, the companies who we speak to work in an age where they tend to obviously want to win more projects than ever but they're, they're responding to more than they have um, in in the past but they're also having to submit a lot more information so lots of businesses employ bid coordinators now because of the level of administration associated with bids and lots of clients we speak to see this as an administrative burden rather than um, you know rather than a positive thing which obviously winning winning projects um, which obviously winning projects is so um, yeah lo lots of our clients feel that this is this is yeah winning projects represent represents um, or the administration associated with winning projects represents an administrative burden um, which is what we're going to talk about now so if I just move on to the next slide um, Typically, the information which I mentioned, such as financial data, qualifications of staff, etc., this is is spread around a business rather than in one central place. So, when responding to a bid, there's lots of different um, coordinators and contributors uh, re required because the information could be with a finance team. So, whoever's whoever's responding to the bid tends to have to speak to project staff, sometimes senior management. Um, the finance team, as well as business support functions, if you have to evidence your quality management procedures. Um, so typically, you could be going to f five or six different people in a company to put together a winning response for for a bid. Lots of this is very manual. It's it's obviously open to to error, um, and and involves and involves um, the the time and resource of your colleagues rather than you just having all of your data and documents in one place um, and and being able to use that in a more automated way. So our view is rather than going to a finance team and asking for your most recent results and rather than going to a, you know, a senior partner in charge of one uh, of a sector to understand your track record there, that this information should be readily available. Um, the main thing is that lots of the information you're asked to submit in request in, uh, in proposals um, is quite repetitive and, and, and is the same uh, a lot so uh, you need tools which allow you to reuse this information uh, particularly if, 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 it's, um, if you're trying to reuse information which you know which the company's produced but perhaps you haven't produced it yourself um, so you may not know um, where it is. So the idea of having one central hub of all of your previous uh, bids and submissions uh, organized by sector or by client um, can be very powerful. But the main thing is that um, lots of our lots of um, businesses, particularly in the professional services world, just feel that submitting bids is, has become an administrative um, burden. So if I just um, move on to the um, next next slide. So just here we've got another poll which basically um, says when preparing an RFP response, what do you feel is the most, um, is the most challenging thing for you? Whether it's um, keeping track of changes, coordinating uh, responses among team members, uh, managing version control or organizing manual changes um, as, per a client, uh, as per a client's request. We'll just wait for the uh, responses to come in. More people voting. So um, we'll do it the same way as we did last time, just a little longer for everybody to join the poll. All right, we have a lot of people voting. Some still missing, so in case you want to still join, five more seconds for the poll to join. All right then, let's 
close it and share the results. Seems like uh, there are quite the, it's quite the balance between the, the chores that they have about RFPs. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Good. Thank you, everyone. So um, if we just go on to the next slide. So um, there is an alternative um, way of working. Typically, um, as I mentioned, um, in the old way, we see uh, lots of businesses having deep up mental systems, which isn't isn't ideal if you're responding to a bid which tends to tends to need input from all of those um, departments or, or or systems. So if I just move on to the next slide, we've got a, um, a visual representation of what the new world should look like, um, because rather than having each department in the business or each office in the business working in their own silo, there are systems available which um, basically help you centralise your data and documents to ensure you're only a couple of clicks away from this information. So rather than going to your finance team and asking for you know your latest figures, or rather than going to uh, perhaps your marketing team and asking for your track record in a, in a certain sector, this should all be readily um, available. So if you've got all of your data in one place through, through one system, that means you've got a really good starting point to report from. Uh, if you can then auto-generate documents from these types of tools, it means that the repetitive um, activities which you do uh, when trying to win projects such as generating CVs, generating standard documents, um, you can do that in a much more automated way, which means that you've got more time to think about how do we present this information to a client, um, you know, what are we going to say to the client rather than actually doing the, um, the kind of administration work associated with winning the, winning the bid. Um, so that's data. Having all of your data in one place means you can report and means you can generate documents in a much quicker way. Um, but also, um, as the responses of the poll show, um, there's lots of information which comes in on bids. So there's a real need to centralise this in one place. So whether it's all of the documents and emails relating to a bid, um, it's really important to be able to find them quickly, particularly if you've got more than one person working on that. But probably more importantly is that there are tools available which allow you to, such as Mail Manager, which allow you to recycle information from previous bids in a much more efficient way. So rather than trying to think, oh, I know someone's, you know, I know someone's um, done some work in the education sector before, um, I'll go and talk to him to see if he's got any information on this topic. There should be, you should just use a system which allows you to find this information quickly, rather than thinking about who do I need to speak to, who's got some knowledge about that, then you know, knowledge shouldn't leave the employee, it should be in one system. So that's, um, that's, that's what we're going to talk about, um, mm -hmm. to talk about next. All right, thank you very much for the insight so far. Um, Jacob, I, I have the great job to do to prove what you've just said, that there is a new way to do this. And before this, um, I want to introduce you to two people um, so on the left side we have Michaela, on the right side um, we have Bernard. I have the great job to beat Bernard today. Uh, Michaela will be my customer and I will be the one who's actually talking to her about the bid. And before I start with the new word, how would I do this if I would still do with the standard way? So usually what I would do is um, I'd manually write a quote based on SharePoint information, Excel, PowerPoint. So I've mentioned first SharePoint the first time today. So what we're going to do today as a scenario is we use SharePoint and dynamic CRM technology wise, but this is just one way um, of actually having the project. Basically the technology in this part doesn't really matter. It could be coming from everywhere. Now usually when I put together all my information from the distant system, different systems to one place, mainly copy paste, I save it as a PDF, attach it to email and send it. Cost me, probably around one hour so far. Now there's the upload to SharePoint, so everything is kept in an archive. Um, I will put in, if I get the response from Michaela, I will put in some change requests from Michaela, which means I basically have to repeat steps one, two, three, once again, it takes me another hour. And then I have to remember everything that I might have done wrong in another copy-paste version. Um, and for example, if another colleague joins the project, it's quite hard for him to trace because he doesn't really see my inbox. And that's not something he can still browse through. And that's something that we want because it just makes it so much easier instead of like having to ask everybody, we want to keep it traceable. Now, yeah, let's start with the new way. And that will be the first part of the live demo. 
So what I want to show you first is all the information that we need to get together for the, the bit in this case to be complete. So as you can see in here, that's Dynamics 365, a CRM system, which could of course be any CRM system that you want to use. And we do have um, the solar panel offer. We do have um, a lot of product information here. We have the sum. But usually when it comes to having a bid or having uh, a quote that we want to generate, that's not the, information, the only information that we include into such a, such a quote. And the rest of the information that we have is stored within SharePoint. So there's a SharePoint online site with different quote modules. Um, so very, very standard principle. For example, I was on site with the customer. I had a presentation which is going to be our solar presentation, standard PowerPoint file. Then there are a couple of work documents I want to include into this quote. So for example, there is the project description. You see there are also some charts included, some images. Um, rather something that's usually copy based or a lot of work to put together and to merge it into one document. And we also have an advertisement, same principle, that's a Word document, let me just show that to you. So everybody joining um, or everybody receiving a quote can participate in the contest, that's what we will insert in here for our commercial reasons. And then eventually we have discussed some figures with the customer and those, custom, uh, those figures we've put together and summed them up in an Excel sheet that's right here. So I could also change this right here in SharePoint Online with everything done. Now the good part, instead of actually needing to create one template in Word and do all the manual step that I already had, um, I have the option here. That's um, syntax 42 functionality to preview a document, to create a draft email with that and save it to SharePoint. I could email it right away or save it to SharePoint. Now the easiest option and the option that I would go for also in terms of the process first is I want to generate the document based on all the information that we have just seen. So I can have one glimpse at everything that's there together before the customer actually receives that offer, that quote, um, which means currently the system is connecting to SharePoint Online, having Excel data integrated, having Word data integrated, having PowerPoint data integrated, and also all this information that I have within CRM that's also put into the document. And also the document has some logic. So that's something I can define in a template. Um, I hope the webinar is not taking too much of my resources currently, um, but that shouldn't be a problem with this. And I will get the quote eventually. All right, there it is. So I can open the document. And you'll see that's a good looking document in this case with, remember this was our project description. Here we have the products that are stored within Dynamics CRM automate a table. So let's say I add a quote or for example, I add a discount that will be shown here. Um, I do have the service installations, which was our Excel sheet within SharePoint online. And on the last page, there's also the technical presentation, PowerPoint and another offer that was the Word document. So with one click, I was able to have everything included within this document and I don't need to do all the copy pasting. For me, the next step, to make it also traceable, but at the same time create an email would be to create a draft email. So in this case, um, we not only get the attachment that we've just seen as a PDF, but we also get a mail. So the output will be an entire mail that I can open with an Outlook and just change right away if I want to change anything or if I just want to send it. It says also the, the mail body automatically created. And yeah, I can send it right away from my Outlook and I don't need to do all the manual work. This, as you've seen, also does a redirect to my SharePoint list. So this is stored within SharePoint now. Um, or if alternatively, if I don't want to see this and just have it opened right away, that would also be possible. Uh, we see there is the order mail a few seconds ago. The order mail also has the quote number included. So it's very easy to trace everything. I can open this. So it is opened within my 
Outlook. Great, if I want to do any other formatting like rigid text, HTML, that's no problem. If I want to add anything to my email, it's also, so I can say, looking forward to your answer, for example. And then before I send this, I just need to make my Outlook work online again. Let's hope this doesn't get too much emails in here. All right, I'm connected, perfect. And now we are able to send this. Um, as I said today, um, representing Bernard, but I'm still sending this to Michaela. Michaela's inbox is synchronized to my site, uh, to my Outlook as well. Um, as you've seen, Michaela Mitarbeiter, that's also here the information. We have the quote information also within the email, all of this with one click. Okay, so let's send this. And as you see, when I send this, I'm not only able to send it, but to also upload it to SharePoint. So that's mail manager functionality, and that's very important for the traceability, and you will see later on see when Jacob um, joins the live demo, um, that you can also have a social map where you will see that, for example, if I'm the one sending a lot of emails around this, people will know that I will be, I'm kind of responsible for the project, or at least I'm the person knowing the most about the project. So send and file this. It's good. Now I should have received an email from Michaela within a second. Send receive starting. Took a little time to go all through Europe, <laughs> but eventually be here. Oh, I was in the wrong outbox, of course. Now this is the inbox of Michaela. So she has obviously already received the email. And you see in here the complete email with everything that we've changed, standard email, also the attachment just like the one that we've just created within Dynamics CRM with all the information included. But I realized as Michaela that um, there is a discount that we agreed on, somebody forgot the discount. Now that's also something that happens very often when it comes to bids. Um, there's negotiations about any terms that need to be changed. So let's say Michaela answers to Johannes or Bernard in our case. Um, hello, Johannes. Please change the discount to 5%. So she will send that to me. Could her again send it in her inbox. I'm just going to do the send only in this case. And then switch back to my inbox where I get the, please change the discount to 5%. I realized I've, I've forgotten that, but instead of having to change everything, the manual document, um, everything that's uploaded to SharePoint, um, I could just go back to my dynamic CRM, change the discount in here, or any other CRM that you might use, and this way we would again trigger the same process, having the craft draft email again, created, um, but this case with a different mail body um, since it's been changed. But instead of going through the process again, what I want to show you now is the template for the email and for our quote. So I have already opened this, um, but before I'm going to show you the Word documents, um, let me just show you the draft. So this is the draft folder. You see there's standard Word documents that are quite easy to change because you probably are familiar with Word. And the first thing I will show you is the mail body and later on a little more complex, the sales quote that we've generated. Well, let's see the mail body. That's the docs 42 add-in. Um, you see there is well, some different data sources and there's, for example, the quote number that we had included in the email. Um, remember, in this email, so that's what was created. 
And if I want to change anything here, let's say I want to add the code number again, or let's make it effective. Run. I can insert this very easy with this being a date time or anything else. Let's um, also define the culture. It will be English. Um, should be okay. Generate this as a trial to just see if it works. I can also decide on which code I want this. And you see, that's our email. Um, live generate in this case in Word. And the second scenario that we had with in Word was our sales quote, also Word document that is included. If I want to change anything on this, um, you can see that there's again the docs for two data fields. These are data fields, drag and drop in them into a document, check where they're coming from. And before I go into too much detail here, um, I will again generate the document. In this case, again, with all the information that we had, what changed to the initial generation of the document is that we should have included the 5% discount in our now scenario. Um, but everything, all the, also the calculations within the document, they are based on that 5%. So you, don't, you do not need to check anything for errors or for new calculations. All of this is obviously done automatically. Um, now I get to see this within Word. Okay, let's just put those documents side to side. So you actually can see the mail. Oh, the document three. That's the one we want. Let's zoom out a little. So you can see all the address information, the validation. You can also see that there is our document included. There is the automated table of the products. Um, yeah, also our Excel sheet from SharePoint. And on the last page, page it's the technical presentation with the advertisement included. I will not go into too much detail about this in our this webinar. If you want to get know, get to know how this technically works, um, we will say this in the end, but we can do follow-ups. So please don't hesitate to ask us to see how this actually works. All right, I promised um, that there will also be some cool integrations with the social map of Mail Manager. Um, which I cannot show. So, Jacob, would you help me? Um, yeah, certainly. If you just make me the uh, uh, presenter. Um, sure. Um, just a second. There you go. Thank you. Uh, so, and uh, thank you, Vatjan. There's a, a really useful insight um, into the, the power of having all of your data in, in one place um, and some of the operational benefits you can drive from that in terms of being able to generate documents quickly. Um, so, um, one of the things which I'm going to show is the search within Mail Manager, uh, as well as the social mapping tools. So the example which um, Johanna's used uh, is Mail Manager, which is working inside Outlook. Um, just here, and if I click on search, I'm able to search for emails across the business now. Um, I've got uh, this number of emails down here. So currently, there's 900, uh, sorry, uh, 97,000 emails um, across the across the system. And what I'm going to do in the scenario of uh, supporting a bid, perhaps there's a there's a bid in the um, in the retail sector, and you know that in the past you've you've worked in that sector before, but you're not sure exactly who to speak to. Currently, lots of emails go around saying who's worked with this person or who's worked on these types of projects before. But this tool allows you to see that information firsthand. So I'm looking at this particular project, which we've worked on in the past. And if I click on the social map here, it will show me who the loudest voices were on this project and who the most prolific senders of emails were. So very quickly, um, it's brought up. Obviously, there's lots of conversations which are going on on this particular one. But I can see here that Reese Lewis is, is the, has been the key 
points of contact along with um, Stephanie Morn. So very quickly, there's you know 100 people on that project, but I can just quickly see that Reese is the person I should go and speak to about this, which is really useful if you're looking back at old projects to see who the best person to speak to is. Um, there's also, just by having your information in one place, there's also lots of other um, ways in which this can be beneficial to support the, both the winning of work and just generally um, resolving queries. Um, just if I wanted to search for, I don't know, a client had asked you a question about um, you know, a message on your environmental plan, I could just type in, um, type in some keywords and I could see how we've responded to that in the past. So sticking with that example, I can just type in some of those phrases here. And very quickly, it, it's gone from 97,000 emails to 16. If I said, well, actually, I know we've probably been asked this in the last six months, say, or, or, or three months, then very quickly I've been able to drill down from 97,000 emails to one in a matter of seconds. I can see what our response was in the past, copy and paste this um, into, or just um, obviously look at it, and this can inform inform our response in the, in, in the future. Um, equally, um, when you're working on a bid and there's more than one person on a bid or on a project, it's really useful to be able to see all of the correspondence in one place. So within Mail Manager, I can just very quickly type in, um, we'll stick with the same example we had earlier of ACOM, and it's and it'll just from 97,000 emails. It's just showing us the emails on this particular um, opportunity we're working on, which are coming directly from Outlook. So, as Johanna showed, when you're sending and uh, sorry, when you're sending and receiving emails, you're prompted and uh, you're prompted uh, to file them, and Mail Manager suggests where they should go to based on the content and the people involved in the email. Um, but importantly, you know, especially in the sort of age we live in, in terms of um, people having to deal with a, a much higher volume of correspondence, correspondence than they have in the past. This is a highly effective tool which allows you to drill in, find either previous information, manage incoming information which is coming in um, in a very light touch, light touch way. You're using Outlook so it requires you know, um, virtually, no, virtually no, no training. Um, so um, yeah, that's that, that's that really. Um, over to you Johannes. Thank you very much. This is so useful when it comes to meetings, just like 10 minutes before and you want to get an update. Um, this is something that really <laughs> could save lives. Um, all right, then I'm going to show my screen again. Please let me know if you see it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, perfect. All right, then. Um, so we've been through the automation. Um, as we said in the agenda, we also want to give you a little product background. Um, usually we would this, do this the other way around this time. We tried it to make it the other way, so we have the scenario first, um, but still we will get the background on the products. Now I'm going to start with the options that you have with Docs42 and Mail Manager we will see in a second. So for Docs42, it's um, mainly about generating documents. We've seen the quote today. You can also do contracts, presentations. Um, you can do this within SharePoint, Dynamics, all the new models, SAP, SQL databases. Uh, so we're quite flexible on the scenario. And if you have a look on our customers, um, they are basically not within one fixed industry. So just documents are created within every process almost. Um, mostly still manual or with either like HTML outputs, but this is something you can automate, you can help your people and employee to do in an automatic way, and instead of doing this, you could then do uh, other work, like in our quote, or like we do it, for example, we have obviously do also our quotes with Docs42, uh, we just have so much to, time to communicate and get to know what's really important about a project rather than spending like hours in the night to actually create the quote. From a technical point of view, this works as you've seen with um, the Docs42 Word add-in, Excel add-in, or PowerPoint add-in, which you see when, as an example Word on the left side with the sales report. And there's the server integration where you can do all the stuff that I've done within SharePoint or within um, Dynamic CRM. The data integration that we offer um, is obviously SharePoint and Dynamic CRM, but you can also include other options. Um, that's something you can connect with in the so-called Docs42 data map. 
and you can also interconnect them. So let's say I want to have something from a SQL database, from SharePoint, and from Dynamic CRM. That's no problem as long as there is a primary key where you can connect the different data. The way you integrate the data into the document, as I said, would be within the Docs42 data map, which you can open in the Docs42 add-ins. Um, so for example, you see here that's a database data source. It's the employee data. And this employee data, again, is shown here on the right side on the task pane that I've also shown in the live demo. You can drag them, drag and drop them into the document. And it's obviously going to take the formatting of the position it is used in Word. So you don't need to think about bold, italic, or anything about this. This is just standard Word functionality, same as for table of contents, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Jacob. Thank you, Johannes. So uh, yes, just to provide some background to the product which, um, which, which I've been uh, talking about today, uh, which is uh, Mail Manager. It, was, um, it has been developed uh, over the past 11 years by Arup, who are a global leader in engineering, um, who effectively developed a product to help companies deal with email overload. And the type of businesses who need um, and really benefit from Mail Manager are those who are working across multiple, multiple projects. Um, the finding to, that they struggle to deal with the um, with with the volume of incoming email, so people as a result are spending too much time in their inbox and not enough time on fee earning work. Um, there tends to be uh, quite a lot of ill discipline around um, email management, so there isn't one joined up approach to filing email which presents its own risks in terms of being able to reproduce everything against the project. You know. It, 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 the, click of a button and equally um, lots and lots of uh, you know more and more workers are um, working remotely uh, and the, the idea that you know if you're out and about you can't file and you can't search for correspondence becomes quite limiting and it's kind of brought around this this whole idea of everyone forwarding emails around to, to each other so um, uh, Mail Manager has really been developed to help employees save time managing filing and searching for email um, help mitigate the uh, risk associated with um, with uh, losing and not being able to retrieve correspondence, um, as well as uh, being able to collaborate better internally. So using the example of uh, resolving a query on a request for a proposal, being able to search and actually make use of your previous information rather than it just being locked into a locked or filed under a project, which, um, you know, realistically you're probably not going to search for unless you've um, sort of had some hands-on experience with it in the past. Um, the next slide just um, provides um, a bit of insight into the unique points of Mail Manager um, are that it's, it's very quick. So the example earlier of going down for, of cert, drilling down from 100,000 emails to you know to two in just a matter of seconds, it's incredibly easy to deploy. So other other products um, available tend to involve you know a sort of six to 12 month um, implementation and a, a, a big change uh, management exercise to actually get staff using it. But because uh, Mail Manager integrates with Outlook. Um, it can be rolled out virtually in a week. It can index your previous information, um, and um, you use the product sometimes without really using, uh, without really realising that you're um, using it, which is a massive benefit. It's also um, entirely uh, flexible and secure in terms of integrating with your other key business applications. So it's something which is fast, easy to use, and um, very very flexible. Thank you. Uh, and then if you have um, obviously have any more um, questions, uh, you can ask questions actually through the uh, GoToWebinar um, type box. So there's, there's a question section which we'll review at the end. Um, but if you'd like more information on Mail Manager specifically, then there's videos, case studies, demonstrations available. Uh, you just have to visit the website or uh, use the contact details um, given at the end of this webinar. All right. I can ask <laughs> the last final question. Now, why change? Um, it's always, you know, I know we all know the struggle we all within daily projects. And sometimes the way we do it works, but still we try to sum up um, what you've seen today and what's the option to, share, to show. Now, just a little summary on our scenario. So usually you start with the customer requesting a quote or requesting a bid. 
Um, you can very easily now create an offer within CRM automatically generated, including the email, including the PDF, and send that to your to customer. By filing them, another employee, for example, would also be able to see everything that's within that. And like Jacob said, the performance, I don't know if you've ever tried to browse through 100,000 documents within Outlook. Um, yeah, that's quite impressive on the, on the mail manager side. Now, after the feedback, and the negotiated terms are again put into the CRM or again put into the SharePoint. You can again send code and file this so everything keeps being traceable. And for both of them, there are some yeah, benefits of this, which mainly I'd say is the speed. So you can reduce very costs, uh, what, what, what time effect, time costing um, actions can be done automatically. And instead, you can do stuff that you want to do more effectively. So for example, you have either other opportunities that you can focus on more, or you have the option to actually talk to your customer and really give quality feedback and quality bits. From a technical point of view, um, the summary, also for those that will maybe are not able to join this webinar, um, this will also be what we send the the recording as well as the PowerPoint slides out to all the customers and, and those that haven't been able to attend the webinar. Just as a quick summary. So as I said, it's mainly speed, it's efficiency, um, it's more being able to do stuff that you really want to do or you need to do, for example, to adapt to market trends and chances very quickly. So for example, we had one customer um, where they were able to adapt based on, for example, the data just being in Excel instead of like having a complicated application. And this way they were able to gain 100 customers, I think, per day in a very easy way. And yeah, our favorite quote is, I love doing my work this way again. Um, that's a real life quote we got from a common project. As the next steps, um, if you want to try this yourself, or maybe if you also want to get to, to get to know the product in an individual webinar, we're both to help you both. Um, just contact us. There is going to be a contact slide as the very last slide. And before we get to this, um, we invite you to ask any questions, or maybe there are already some questions asked during the webinar. But I will just check now. Uh, I'm going to look. Okay, so the first question, how long, does it how long does it take to install Mail Manager? Um, so it really varies based on your business, but it, you know, it can be up and running in, in a day, really. It's, um, it's a light touch in installation. We obviously provide some training, um, but um, yeah, it can be up and running um, by tomorrow. That's the mm -hmm. beauty of a product, really. All right. Thank you, Jacob. Um, in case for those that were wondering about the installation of Docs 32, pretty much the same. Within a day, you should be up and running. Also training, um, let's say, about a day. That should be it. Cool. If um, your question wasn't answered well enough, just put um, more information into the question panel, and we can answer that in more detail. Good. So, second question: How do you license the product? I'm not quite sure which product, but I will probably just go for both answering. Okay. So, um, the uh, mail manager product is uh, priced per per user, um, and it can either be priced perpetually, which is a, a one-off uh, cost with a, a, a small amount um, due per year for maintenance, and then there's also a subscription option, which um, can be anywhere between you know four and eight pounds a user, um, based on the size of size of company. Uh, but sorry, uh, four and eight pounds a user per month. Mm -hmm. All right. For us, it's um, pretty much the same principles. So we have prices per user. Um, on the client side, like you've seen the add-in, uh, the integration into, for example, SharePoint is priced with the Docs document server, Docs 42 server, which is available for PowerPoint, Word, and Excel, either all together as the enterprise module or separate as Word, Excel, or PowerPoint. Um, if you want to get to know detailed prices about this, um, yeah, 
Also, please contact us so we can discuss this in the webinar. Um, as I said, the server per instance, the add ends either per client or per user. Good. So we're still waiting, let's say one or two minutes for more questions to come up. So don't hesitate to ask. There's something that you still need to know. All right then. I think we might have answered all questions in case we don't. Um, here are our contact details. So either Jacob or me, um, we're both happy to answer your questions. And yeah, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your questions. And um, I hope that the input was interesting for you. And yeah, we're looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you also, Jacob, for your time. Very Thank interesting you, insights. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for uh, taking the time to join us. And I uh, look forward to speaking to you all soon. All right, then. Bye. Thanks a lot.